Hello, my name is Ralph and welcome back to the channel. It's my time, let's go. Quick shout out down there to Hippie's Jobber Corner. Old Hippie sent me this sweater, home of the sketchy jobbers. Uh, check him out at Hippie's Jobber Corner. I'm sure you'll like his content. And thanks, Hippie. Appreciate the appreciate the t-shirt. And uh, I'll wear the shit out of it. Today we're gonna get on to working some more on the shovel head motor and uh, seeing how far we can get today. So follow us along and away we go. So as it goes with things, sometimes stuff just never quits and you just got more and more stuff to do, like one step forward, one step back. But such is the way it is with a lot of these vintage machines. So you have to be patient, not get too excited, fix what you gotta fix, keep moving ahead. Now when we when we put Gus's motor together, we put the cam cover on and all the troubles we've had with the cam covers, I've, I've opted to give him my cam cover that I know is good and, and mount that on. Uh, when I went to torque it on and went around to torque it, Lo and behold, two of the holes stripped out. Uh, just started to put some torque on them. So what we're gonna have to do is take the cam cover off, fix those holes, helicoil them, and uh, put the case back on and retorque it on. So, let's get at it. So the ones that we found here is this top right hand corner, and I believe it's this one here. I know one of the other ones is soft. See once we get them off. I mean, the top right hand one for sure is no good. Now, we can get this out without disturbing anything. There we go. Take this off for the moment. That is the offending hole up here. So we put a little bit of red Loctite on it and we have our little insert and on the end of the insert is a little tang on there which we're going to have to break off uh, once we get it in there. There we go. Patience. Just take your time. There we go. Now we just have to go in there break that little tab off. for that little tiny metal piece in there. And there's the other little piece out of there. You wanna get those out there so that they, they don't interfere with your threads in there. Very important. So we got everything squared away. We've double checked our timing marks. We fixed the holes. That's way better. Okay. Then we've thrown a, a quick coat of paint on these. I bet you can see where they still say up. That's what we want. Up.
Let's see if I can get in there with this one. Any dandy little wrench that you can pick up that's uh, great for these shovel hits. So the next thing we gotta do is put our manifold on. And when this manifold goes on, these flanges wanna sit as flush as you can against the flanges on the head. So we've left our heads a little bit loose as you can see here. And that enables you to put this in and line those up so that you get the best fit one you'll get fit one way, one you get the other. But you'll find that there's a spot there where they, they fit nicely. We'll just snug them up a little bit. And then we'll double check. And there we go. And you can also tell if they're lined up because inside they fit quite nice. The idea is to get these flanges to fit with these flanges. And by moving the heads around, you can find yourself a nice spot where they'll fit evenly on both heads. So when you go to put the band clamps on, um, it'll give you a nice fit. So here you can see a little better where these are fitting just nice and flush. There and there. And that's what you're looking for in there to get a, a nice, a nice smooth fit. So now we're just gonna go around and snug these up. Now that it's sort of snugged up, just give it one more check in there. And that looks good. So now we're going to go ahead and torque the heads down and, and I like to use this little, this little thing and I downloaded this off the internet so you can get an idea of what it says and a torque pattern front and rear. It says to zoom at 55 pounds and then at 65 pounds. It's quite similar to the evolution as you're doing the first two by the oil hole first. So that's what we're going to go by and I've done my calculations because I have a two inch extension on this. Makes it a lot easier to get at for me. So we're gonna go around and do them on, I think I'm at 47 here first to start with. So, so we'll just, I'm just gonna snug them up all first. Because we're not very tight there. Just have them snugged up. Just makes it a little bit easier. I remember when I went to school, Kurt Heinrich taught us, and when we were talking about torque, he said one thing to remember, and that's with an extension like this on here, the average man will pull 65 pounds. We've also oiled all these head bolts up. So make sure to keep your extension nice and straight. We'll start back here with number one. Three. Four. Four. And the one in the front there is a little tricky to get at. And now we'll do the front head. Same thing. And then our final, then our final torque is 65 pounds with our extension on here. Uh, we're at 55.7, so 55.7 is, is about where we wanna go. That's 
got her all torqued down to 65 pounds. These ones are 35 pounds on, on here, which is, is tight, but not real tight. Once we fire the motor up and everything and everything heats up though, we'll snug these all up and we'll go around and torque these ones again uh, to make sure they're seated in properly. But that's about it for that. So we're moving along. So we're going to work on our rocker boxes here and it's sometimes the, the rocker boxes are a cause of excessive noise in the top end. There is a play from side to side on these and what we have to do is set these up. So I have like a 10 thou. Now most of the rocker arm clearances say from 0.004 to 0.025 which is huge and if you set it up on the 25 side it will be as noisy as can be. These ones are like a 10. Tango's in that easy, Tango's in that easy, and Tango's in that easy. So what we're going to do is take these apart and shim them up and put the right kind of shims in them. Now I find the best way to do it is to look at your manual and if you want to check your manual out, the place to check that is eManual Online. They have manuals for every application that you can think of and for these rocker box specs, we'll go and have a quick look and see what we can find out. So we just head for eManual Online is what we're looking for and we're just going to type in Harley H-A-R-L-E-Y and it will pull you up 6,774 search results found for Harley Davidson look here and pick out a manual that you might be interested in here's an 84 to 99 service manual and preview the file and you can see that it shows you all the info in the file of a preview of what you might be looking for so that you can breeze through and give you an idea of what you want. So we just go and find the, the manual that we need and then we look up chapter four engine here, which is the section that we'll need to uh, find our rocker arms in it. Then we can search down through for a section that says rocker arm, and so rocker arm cover and cylinder head. And here you'll find the information as you flip down through it for the complete diagram of the rocker arm so you know where all the pieces go, the shafts, the arms, all your caps, everything like that that you might need. And if we flip down further, you'll find that there's removal and installation instructions. Remove the rocker arm cover nuts and washers. Tap the rocker arm cover with a plastic mallet and remove it from the cylinder head. Remove the rocker arm shaft screws and the O-rings. On 81 and later models, remove the spacer washer also and discard the O-ring. So as we look down farther, we see pictures of the rocker arms themselves showing you the different pieces uh, that are involved with it. Where the rocker arms shaft, how to inspect the ends of the rocker arms. So everything that you virtually need, there's the rocker arms there showing you to keep an eye on the end. This is showing you the shafts. So it shows you basically everything that you need to know about your rocker arms. And if we look down at the end of each chapter, uh, it will give you all the specs and everything on your motor. The engine specifications, in our case, for the 78 to 84. And we're looking for rocker arms that have to fit in the bushing, 5 ten thousandths to, of an inch to 2 thou. The end clearance, 4 thou to 25 thousandths of an inch. And we're going to be focusing on this and getting the 0 .004 or 4 thousandths of an inch is what we're looking for. Tightening. Rocker arm cover at 15 foot pounds. Be sure to check out eManual online uh, for all your Harley Davidson needs or anything else, but definitely the Harley Davidson is what we deal with. Uh, so you can see that there's a wide variety of models and, and books available for you. So surely you can find exactly what you need here at eManual online. As you've seen, being able to revert back to your manual is invaluable. And uh, I've always suggested that to everybody. And I, and I hope everybody takes it, uh, takes it to heart. A manual is invaluable and gives you all the little details and the small things that you need to know. So do check out eManual online and give us the special code numbers and you'll get a discount off them today. So as you can see from the specs, they're telling us zero to 25 thousandths of an inch. So we need to take these apart, put shims in here, and with the manual, it also shows you where the shims should go. So we don't just randomly put them in where some, some places they'll wear improperly and uh, the possibility is always there of breaking up the shim. So we'll get these apart 
We'll get our shims and uh, we'll go to work on setting these up. So we'll start by loosening them up if we can. Right, so we're gonna try a seven thou on this one. And those feel pretty good. So we just slide this back in. Wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Their small spacer. And now we'll check down in here with our feeler gauges. Let's try a four. And the four just goes in there. So. I can slide a four down inside. So you can see by looking down in here, that we slide that right in there. And I can put a four in there, no problem at all. Now, just out of curiosity, let's try a five. And I can just get a five in. So it gives us an extra thousandths of an inch there on that one. So that looks pretty good. Now let's check out the other one. And let's see what where are we to start with. Just a 10. So I don't know what I have for small. I would like to have like about a five. They look good. So, four slides in there good so now we've gone for, to a quiet rocker arm of which you can't hear compared to these ones so that'll translate into into rocker arm noise and now we have this
Those are good to go. Problem. Four thousand. So that big takes care of the uh, rocker boxes. We get them all set up with four to five thou clearance on them, which is, is snug, but we don't want any more noise than we have to have in it. Um, so that's going to be good. I am going to take them apart one more time, and I'm going to put new O-rings in them. I'm going to check and see if I have some. But we'll put the new O-rings in them, then we'll torque them down to specs, and they should be good to go. There we go. These oversized rings are really nice for something that's worn out. And those ones were in there, they would just slide in and out and in and out. They wouldn't even, you know, they weren't, and the, these nuts were tight, so the O-ring wasn't tight. Now they will be. Nothing worse than a leaky O-ring. Let's see if I can get those in there. Oversized O-ring. Now we've got our rocker boxes finished and we're running between four and seven thousandths of an inch in there. So they're very snug and they'll take any kind of play out of their racket that those will make in there. I'm hoping. So that's the last piece of the puzzle that really has to be fitted and such, I think. So, uh, so it's time to put the rest together. All right. Today we're going to get the tops on it. That's the plan, maybe get the push rods in it, get the uh, manifold on it, and we're gonna start with those different things to see where we can get. So stick with us and let's get at it. So to start with, we're gonna put a little bit of engine lube on the tops of our, of our valves, just so they have a little something there to start with. It never hurts. Yeah, we're just gonna oil them up a little bit in here. Yeah, 
here. And we've got our rocker boxes ready to go. And we know which one goes on the rear because if we pay attention to the fittings here. And the fittings have to go between the engine. So these ones will go like this. Now we're gonna try and slide these on here. And hopefully my rocker arms will stay in place long enough. There we go. There we go. And we've got those in place. Now we've put new rubbers in our crossover line here. And this has to go in here before the heads are set down and torqued on. Sometimes you can get them in, sometimes you can't. But they would have to go in there first, like that. Also our, our bottom to top line, uh, which you won't be able to get in there without crushing them out or bending them out. Just gonna move our rubbers down a little bit. We've got brand new rubbers in here, which can make it a little bit, a little bit hard. And that's where we want it. So we just lift this up just a tiny bit. And make sure that we have these all in place. Now we can go ahead and get ready to torque our rocker boxes down. And we're gonna start by putting a bit of Loctite on each one. And we know they suggest that these nuts go on at 12 to 15 pounds. First, we'll get all our small washers in place. And these are flat washers. You don't use lock washers on here because they will work loose. so much back here as it is these these two small ones on the rear which are very very tight in here we're gonna put those on there Okay, so these are torqued out at 12 to 15 pounds, and we've got our torque red set for 14. Just gonna go along and snug them up for the final torque. Just like to torque them down nice and even first. And I don't like to go too far with the, uh, with the power ratchet because it's it really torques them on. So before when we torqued our heads down, we made sure that our manifolds fit nice and flush in here. And they can be a bit of a, a bit of a bear to get up in there sometimes. Uh, but we're just gonna work it nice and easy there. So we've got some red urethane ones. one in there and we'll try to get the other one back in here it can be a real patience tester to get on there there 
is no easy way. You just gotta kind of work them a little bit and you'll end up with a lip on the outside here. So, Take a screwdriver and stick it in there. Just lightly lift the lip and keep working on it. Now a little bit of oil could help, but I find that lots of times the oil makes it so hard to hang on to that you're hard pressed to get it on there. There we go. And we can tell that we got a nice a nice fit there by sticking our fingers in there. Okay. And we'll get our nuts and that started on here. Um, but I'm not going to tighten it up until I go to put the carburetor on and then I can make sure that we're lined up right. There we go for that one. And there, we have those on there. Like I say, we won't tighten them up yet because we'll wait till we, we'll wait till we get the carburetor on and then we can adjust the final adjustment and then we'll snug those up. So we'll go along and Get these little guys in place, pulling the rubbers down. Right, now we've got those things in place. Now we're gonna work on getting our push rods where they should be and getting them set up. So I'll get things ready and we'll come back and have a look at that. So I'm gonna start with the front intake here. So we'll just roll the motor over. And we'll watch our, our lifters moving up and down. Now it's coming up. One to go down, and it's going down, and our rear lifter is moving up. And when our rear lifter is at the top, then this one is down as far as it should be. And we'll put a little, little dab of engine lube right in the pocket there, and a good gob on the, the top of our lifter. Now we've made sure that we have our rubber up inside. These push rods are different lengths, so we have long ones and short ones. And the short ones we're going to put in here in the intakes, and the long ones go on the other side, out, out on the outside. We've got all our, uh, all our rubbers in, our quad seals in the bottom. Oh, we're going to stick that up in place. And we'll just adjust these down until they're snugged up. Just got this little piece of wire that I have that helps me keep these up in place while I'm doing the adjustments.
we'll just get our little little gold cup in here and uh, we've got it with our washer and our screw we'll make sure that our slot is lined up in the end of the camshaft and this is our new one not like the one that was in it Snug it up in there. Sometimes they can be a little tight to get in there. There we go. Make sure we can move it. Let it down. I'm going to stick these in there have them in place when it's time to time our ignition system. Okay. We put our push rod in here. Just put this up here to keep the clip up. We're just gonna snug it up there to where where it snugs up. And according to the gym setting, we need to go three complete turns on this. Just put a little mark under there. Hold this bottom one. One. It's two. And that's three. Now we're three complete turns on these because these are 32 threads per inch and Jim's gives a listing for all the different ones at 28 or 30 or whatever they may be and they tell you just exactly how many turns to go down on this to set it where it should be. So it's important to pay attention to that. I'm going to hold these here like this. It's a little tricky. You need to hold all three. That won't cut it. You need to hold the two while we tighten the one up on the push rod so nothing moves. There. Now we can't move this. So we're going to have to set and wait. Uh, so until this we can spin this easily with our fingers uh, before we go on to the next one. Remember you're using the two short ones for the intakes and the long ones for the exhaust. So we'll just let those bleed down and uh, get at the other ones. So now we've got this one here so that we can spin it. No problem at all. This is nice nice and loose here. And we're just going to turn our motor over so this one goes down. Okay, we want this one to go down. 
all the way, and the other one will come up. Once that's up to the top, we know we're all the way down on this one. Engine lube in there, on the top of our push rod as well. Again, making sure that you have your rubber up in the top. Nothing worse than getting them all done and you forgot to put the rubber up there. We'll just extend it out. Got that where we want it. We're just going to put a little dot on there. And three. Take our adjuster nut, put it up to the top. Our locking nut. We'll hold this one so that we can lock our top nut. There we go, and we'll let that sit until this one bleeds down and. Once this one's bled down, then we'll go along and work at the other ones. Just as a note, the two short ones were the same length, but these Jim's push rods, you can see there's a little difference in the length here. And the longest one will go way out here to the front. That's the longest reach. So that's the one that will go up here. So I'm just going to let these bleed down and then I'm going to go along and do the rest. And we'll get them all in place and then we'll come back. All right. So we're just getting down to just getting down to some of the small things now. Got the push rods all done. And I've hooked up my a lot of the stuff for the engine stand so it will run. And now we're just trying to get the carb on it, get it lined up so we can tighten up our carb manifold clamps. Okay, I got my bracket for this so that I can see where it's going to be and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I have for brackets on it. it. Looks like this is going to work. Go back and just machined out a little little small spacer to go in there. Looks like it should be just about right. Just slide in there. That's what we want. That way there won't be no undue pressure on that. I don't like it when things don't fit smoothly and nice and easy without any stress on it. There's really no need for it. 
It just takes a couple more minutes to get it so it fits right. Now I can go along and do the, the manifold bolts in the back and tighten them up on the rubbers. So, looks good there. All right, we're getting down to it now. Something to go in there. Let's see if I can find a piece of hose for runoff. And we'll check for other little things that we gotta do. Get a little longer hose for your gas line runoff and hook up my oil lines and such and uh, see about getting some oil into her. All right. So if you enjoyed this video today, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those sorts of things. It helps our channel to grow and we appreciate it from you all. Lastly, a big shout out to all my friends down south, Hippie's Chopper Corner. Big shout out to Slick down at Slickhead's Custom Cycle. See him out there playing in the warm weather. Just makes me sick almost. Also a shout out to Gus, this, this old chopper. And a big shout out to Sean at Sean's Nonstock Customs Limited. Sean's a great fabricator and uh, we're lucky to have somebody like that in this part of the country to, uh, as a go-to guy when you need your framework. So thank you all and many others for subscribing and uh, stick with us when next week we're going to finish up this motor, get it fired up on the stand and Gus is going to come up and have a look at it and hear it running for the first time and uh, he gets pretty excited so it's, uh, it's a good video. So we'll see you next week.